H. H. Holmes, born Herman Webster Mudgett in 1861, is one of America's most infamous serial killers. He is believed to have killed anywhere from 27 to 200 people during the 1890s. His killing spree was carried out in a specially constructed murder castle in Chicago, which was designed to trap and kill his victims. Holmes had a troubled childhood, and he showed signs of being a sociopath from an early age. He attended medical school at the University of Michigan, where he became fascinated with human anatomy and dissection. After completing his medical studies, Holmes moved to Chicago and began working at a drugstore owned by a man named Dr. E.S. Holton. When Holton died, Holmes purchased the drugstore and began making renovations to the building that would eventually become his murder castle. The castle was a three-story building that contained secret passageways, trap doors, and a gas chamber. Holmes would lure his victims into the castle, where he would torture and kill them. He also sold the skeletons of his victims to medical schools and laboratories. Holmes was eventually caught when one of his accomplices, Benjamin Pitesel, was arrested for insurance fraud. Pitesel had promised to fake his own death so that his wife could collect on a life insurance policy, but Holmes actually killed him and made it look like an accident. Holmes was arrested and charged with murder, and he went on trial in 1895. He was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. He confessed to 27 murders, but he is believed to have killed many more. The case of H.H. H. Holmes is one of the most gruesome and chilling in American history. His murder castle and his sadistic methods of killing his victims have made him an enduring figure in popular culture. John Bodkin Adams was a doctor who practiced in Eastbourne, England in the 1940s and 1950s. He had a reputation for being a skilled physician, especially with elderly patients. However, suspicion began to mount against him when a large number of his patients began to die unexpectedly, and he appeared to benefit financially from their deaths. Despite evidence of foul play, Adams was never charged with murder. In 1956, he was finally put on trial for the murder of one of his patients, Edith Alice Morell. The prosecution presented evidence of Adams administering lethal doses of drugs to Morell, but Adams's defense team argued that her death was due to natural causes. The trial was highly publicized, and Adams became a celebrity of sorts, with some people even sending him fan mail. However, the jury found him not guilty, much to the shock of many. After the trial, Adams was tried for fraud and forgery, and he was struck off the medical register in 1957. Although Adams was never convicted of murder, the case is still considered one of the most controversial in British legal history. Many believe that Adams was a serial killer who got away with murder. Janine Jones was a nurse who worked in the pediatric intensive care unit at a hospital in San Antonio, Texas, in the 1980s. She is known to have killed at least one child and injured several others by injecting them with lethal doses of drugs. Jones's crimes were discovered when a suspicious doctor ordered tests on a child who had unexpectedly gone into cardiac arrest while under Jones's care. The tests showed that the child had been injected with a powerful muscle relaxant that Jones had access to. Jones was eventually charged with murder and injury to a child. She was found guilty and sentenced to 99 years in prison. However, due to a law at the time that limited prison sentences to 20 years, Jones could be released after serving just a fraction of her sentence. In 2017, Jones was indicted on a new murder charge, and she is currently serving her sentence in a Texas prison. Her case is a chilling reminder of the potential danger posed by healthcare professionals who abuse their positions of trust to harm their patients. Harold Shipman, also known as Dr. Death, was a British general practitioner who is considered to be one of the most prolific serial killers in modern history. He was born in Nottingham, England in 1946 and grew up in a working-class family. Shipman began practicing medicine in the 1970s and quickly gained a reputation as a skilled and compassionate doctor. However, it was later discovered that he had a dark side. He began killing his patients, often elderly women, by administering lethal doses of diamorphine, a powerful painkiller. The murders continued for more than two decades, and Shipman is estimated to have killed between 215 and 260 people. He was able to cover up his crimes by falsifying medical records and death certificates. 
Shipman's crimes were eventually discovered when a local undertaker noticed that a disproportionate number of his clients had been treated by Shipman before their deaths. An investigation was launched, and it was discovered that Shipman had killed at least 15 of his patients. In 2000, Shipman was arrested and charged with 15 counts of murder and one count of forgery. He was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. He later committed suicide by hanging himself in his cell in 2004. The case of Harold Shipman is considered to be one of the most shocking and disturbing in the history of British medicine. It has led to major changes in the way doctors are monitored and the way deaths are investigated in the UK. Dr. Christopher Dunch was a neurosurgeon in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas. His patients described him as a charismatic and confident doctor who promised to relieve their pain through surgery. However, his surgical skills were far from competent. Over the course of his career, Dunch performed over 30 surgeries, and almost all of them resulted in severe complications or death. Patients suffered from infections, paralysis, and even brain damage. Some of his patients had to undergo additional surgeries to correct the damage he caused. Despite repeated complaints from other doctors and medical professionals, Dunch continued to operate. Some even suspected that he was under the influence of drugs or alcohol during some of his surgeries. Eventually, Dunch's reckless behavior caught up with him, and he was charged with aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury. He was sentenced to life in prison in 2017. The case of Dr. Christopher Dunch is a chilling example of the harm that can be caused when a doctor's arrogance and disregard for patient safety outweigh their medical expertise. His story has been the subject of numerous documentaries and true crime podcasts and serves as a reminder of the importance of holding doctors accountable for their actions. Dr. Marcel Petiot was a French physician who lived during the early 20th century. He is known for being one of the most prolific serial killers in French history. Petiot's crimes began during World War II, when he claimed to be a member of the French resistance and offered to help Jewish people escape from the Nazis. He charged his clients large sums of money for this service and instructed them to meet him at his home in Paris. Once they arrived, Petiot would tell his victims that they needed to be disinfected before leaving the country. He would then lead them to his basement, where he would inject them with a lethal dose of poison and dismember their bodies. He later claimed that he was only killing Nazi collaborators and that he was acting in the interest of France. In 1944, a neighbor complained about a foul odor coming from Petiot's home, which led police to investigate. They found human remains in his basement, as well as evidence of his fraudulent activities. Petiot was arrested and charged with multiple murders. During his trial, Petio was uncooperative and refused to answer questions. He was eventually found guilty and sentenced to death by guillotine. Petio was executed on May 25, 1946. Dr. Michael Swango was an American physician who is considered to be one of the most prolific serial killers in the history of medicine. Born in 1954, Swango grew up in Quincy, Illinois, and attended Southern Illinois University School of Medicine. During his medical training, Swango's peers and instructors began to notice that he had a strange fascination with death and that he seemed to enjoy causing his patients pain. Swango's troubles with the law began in 1984 when he was arrested for poisoning several of his colleagues at an Illinois hospital. He was convicted of aggravated battery and sentenced to five years in prison, but was released after serving just two and a half years. After his release, Swango managed to secure work at several hospitals throughout the United States, despite his criminal history. It was not until 1997 that Swango's crimes were finally uncovered. While working at the Northport Veterans Affairs Medical Center in New York, Swango was caught injecting a patient with an unknown substance. Investigators found evidence that Swango had been responsible for numerous deaths and injuries throughout his career, including the poisoning of several of his patients during his time at a hospital in Ohio. In 2000, Swango was convicted of three counts of murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He later pleaded guilty to an additional charge of murder and admitted to killing several other patients over the course of his career. Swango is currently serving his sentence at the United States Penitentiary in Florence, Colorado. 
His crimes have been the subject of several books and documentaries and have prompted a re-evaluation of the way in which healthcare professionals are screened and monitored.